Hey everyone. So a friend of mine asked me to make a video about how to re-spool 35mm film for red scale photography. Uh, you're going to have to go into someplace dark to do part of this and I'll tell you what you need to uh, have in the dark and when. Uh, but real quickly, red scale photography, if you've never seen it, is where you shoot a, an image backwards through color film so the anti-halation layer is towards the lens and the emulsion is away from the lens, the opposite of normal and it makes everything appear red. And the reason for that is because uh, you have three layers of emulsion with color film. Red, another one, and another one. Red's on the back next to the film base uh, when it's loaded properly. And I think it's red, it's red, green, and blue are the three layers. And uh, so, is it red, green? Anyway, uh, so, yeah. I should have should have uh, researched that before I said anything. Anyway, so uh, when you film, sh uh, put the film in backwards, the light hits the red layer first, and so m the red layer absorbs most of the light, and so the other co other colors don't register. So that's that's why everything appears red scale. It was, as I understand it, discovered by large format photographers who accidentally put their film in backwards and found that it had an interesting effect, but. It's popular for 35 millimeter, and it can have some interesting effects. So I have three rolls of film here that are all shot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to re-spool in two different ways 35 millimeter film for red scale photography. So at this point, you're going to want to go into a dark room or grab a large dark bag or tent. Uh, for this, I, I actually find this easier to do in the bathroom with a towel under the door. So what we're going to do is, anytime you take the film out of the cassette, you got to be completely out of the light or you're going to ruin the film. So for, for this, what we're going to do is take all the film out of the cassette. You can see we're all the way back to the tape here. We want to cut this really, really flat and level. So I'm going to use the back of this perforation and the back of the perforation across from it to make a nice straight cut. And that's about as good as I can get. Now I'm going to get to take some scotch tape here. I'm going to put the scotch tape on the film here. And now I'm going to tape this to the film with the emulsion the wrong way round. So you can see here, this is the proper loading way and now the emulsion is on backwards. Get another piece of film. You don't want to make this too thick. I'm using scotch tape uh, or cellophane tape because it's nice and thin and it can still make it past the felt on the cartridges without messing anything up. And it'll, as long as you're not jamming your advance forward, which you shouldn't do anyway, it'll hold just fine. Now here's what here's what you can it looks like now. Again, you're still in the dark, so you cannot have any light touching your film or it's going to be ruined. You want to make sure to keep your finger here because we're going to be spooling this on backwards. It's basically going to be a very strong spring. If you don't maintain constant tension on this, this spool here, it's going to unwind itself. And there we go, tapes in, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to take my finger off, and you could hear that little clicking noise. That was the film unwinding itself. So now I've got to pull a little bit more tension back into it. If you can imagine what a pain that is when you're halfway through a 36 exposure roll. One thing to bear in mind, this is really, this is a color technique. Uh, with black and white, you're not really going to get the same effect uh, because black and white doesn't have emulsion layers in the same way that color film does. So putting black and white film in backwards isn't going to give you suddenly a red scale image. Now, the tab is going to be upside down, so you're going to have to cut yourself a new tab. There you go. Red scale roll right there. And now let's take a look at another way to do this. So we finished that red scale roll. This way involves two rolls of film. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this flat. Nice level flat cut, the same way we did the last one from the back of a registration mark to the back of a registration mark. No reason to use the back, you could use the front, I just find it easier to use the back. Now again, we have to be in the pitch dark, so at this point you need to be in a dark place so your film isn't going to be exposed to light. We're going to pull this out, 
There we go. And we're going to cut this the same way. Back of registration mark to the back of the opposite registration mark. That's pretty close. Set that off to the side. You don't want to, that's still good film if you're in the dark. So you want to keep that because you're going to use it in just a minute. Now we've got this flat edge here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our cellophane tape. Now one thing to bear in mind with the cellophane tape is that it's pretty breakable and these edges are sharp. So uh, it's possible that you can cut the cellophane tape on the film. Which isn't the end of the world, you just got to take the piece off and start over again. I'm going to put the second piece on to make sure that it's well adhered. Now bear in mind, you still have to be in the dark for this. But, uh, same, same thing, keep your finger on this because you're basically winding it backwards still. And even though the cassettes are married up like this, uh, I would not take them out into the light at this point because it'd be easy to, to nudge it like that and expose your film. Uh, and there's also the possibility that enough light could get in between the space there to uh, fog your film as you're winding it. Now one thing to bear in mind is that because this film's going in backwards and you're going to be shooting it backwards, you're going to be shooting through the anti-halation layer in the film. And what that means is you have to add a couple of stops. A good rule of thumb and starting point, though this needs to be fine-tuned, is that with is to increase your film uh, uh, by two stops. What that means is if you're shooting 400 ISO color film, you need to expose it as 100. If you're shooting 200, it's 50, as 100 is 25. That actually might not be enough for some anti-halation layers. So if you get your first roll back and it doesn't look good enough, then you might want to increase it to three stops. So from 100 to 12.5, from 200 to 50, or from 400 to, uh, wait, 200 to 25, 400 to 50. So that's cut like that, or that we're gonna cut this flat again. Now here's another spool of red scale ready film. Cut, it, cut yourself a notch so you can load it into your camera. There you go. Now we've got two ready to go. Since you're still in the dark, I hope, when you're doing this, oops, just take this third piece of film that you already cut and tape it on and re-spool it the way you did the first one. And that uh, that will give you the two, the, the advantage of doing it with the two is that it gives you two rolls of film at the end instead of just one. Uh, it's also a little bit easier to go from cassette to cassette uh, because you don't have the film hanging off the front end dangling around and getting in the way all the time. So that is how to take existing cassettes, and I used reusable cassettes, you could use store-bought cassettes. In fact, the way that I just showed you is designed for store-bought cassettes. If you're bulk loading your own film, just put the film in the bulk loader backwards. So uh, that's, that's how you do red scale photography with uh, 35 millimeter film, that's how you re-spool re it for that. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them below in the comments section, or um, uh, if you have any suggestions for videos, please leave that as well. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track. And uh, the last thing is thank you guys for watching.